Hey, Steve Mignani here. We just got back from uh, a long day at Burnison Auto Wrecking where we shot more Junkyard Crawl. Uh, it's now January 6th, 2022, and it's cold outside. So we'll be doing a little more indoor stuff with model cars as we go forward into the next month or so, although in the garage we'll go too. But today, let's have a quick talk about model cars. And I love them. You know, a lot of folks say model cars are for kids. Well, I don't know. I've been building them since I was a kid, and I still consider myself to be a kid even at age 57. So model cars are never something you grow out of, if you're lucky. You know, some amazing stuff over the years are the errors that have been made by kit manufacturers back around, oh, 1999 uh, oh, or so, whatever it is, Revell came out with this here. This is a 1969 Corvette model. It's a nice one. But if you look really close, it says 429 Coupe. Says it again on the side. 429 coupe. We all know that the Chevy 427 was not a 429. So this is something that Ravel launched and quickly uh, took back in. This again was 1989 these things came out. So says the trademark on the side. So again, the Corvette 429 coupe. No, it doesn't have a Boss 429 Ford motor. It's just a box typo. Another great example of, uh, you know, quick thinking was this. This is the 1964 Dodge 300 model, right? there see it says 300 well the reality is this was actually the 64 dodge 330 and round two got it right they redid the box with 330 right there so the question is are these worth anything more than uh you know 10 20 30 bucks the answer i think is probably no but the reality is some people like unusual stuff and I pay a little extra for it. I think they're just unusual. I put them on the wall and they're just kind of cool for conversation like right now. Uh, another thing I've been doing the last couple of uh, months or so is finishing up the Golden Commandos, uh, the Mobius 65 Plymouth altered wheelbase car. Now this is one of the models I've actually painted and done a lot of detail work on. In fact, the Hemi engine is a really, really good Hillborn injected Hemi. Mobius did a fantastic job. The chassis on these things is very, very accurate, very correct. The only downside is the rear axle. I put an eight and three quarter in this one from a Johan turbine car. The reason is the kit comes with, well, an incorrect Dana 60, which is it's just not right for the Golden Commandos car. But that said, whenever I build a model kit like this, I like to do a sort of a, a model in white, unpainted, this one here. This basically lets you see the model kit when you're building it to see if there's any kind of problems that uh, might bite you after it's been detailed and painted. And again, the Mobius Golden Commandos kit, here's the box. This is one of the best model kits of all time. And it's also the first time that an altered wheelbase car has been rendered as a historic artifact rather than a, a toy. So uh, basically a great model kit. So getting back to antique models, okay, one of my favorites is Johan, you know, I like Johan models. And before I get into this, by the way, I had these t-shirts made. Here it says, AMT, mom loves me. Palmer or Pyro, mom likes me. That meant if you were a little kid and mom was buying you a model car, if she really loved you, she'd spend $1.98 on an AMT kit. If she liked you, she'd get to the 69 cent Pyro model kit. So I had these t-shirts made up. But again, speaking of vintage model kits, Johan is one of my favorites. And this is something, the Johan Superbird, this came out in the early 70s. It's a re-release of the original go-round from 1970. But Johan, of course, stands for John Hanley, who was the founder of this plastic kit manufacturer in 1947 or 48. And uh, so the Johan Superbird is a great model. Now, here's the thing. When this was re-released, it was done in a bunch of different colors. And if you're lucky, you get it in white. This is one that was done in blue. Yeah, this is actually molded in blue. It's a built Johan Superbird. It's not a bad model. Uh, the trouble is that it's it's very simple. The chassis is kind of one piece, like a like a promo. But this is an out of the box medium blue, or you know, sort of a, almost green. Another shade of blue is this one here. Again, these are both unpainted, out of the box Johan Superbirds. So again, the problem with these models, if you want to build them. Seriously, you have to prime over this weird blue plastic and then paint it whatever correct color you want to choose. If it's petty blue or, you know, burnt orange or white or whatever color you want to make it. So that's one of the problems with Johan Superbirds. This one here, being a re-release, um, 
it is molded in, well, let's find out. The thing of it is, these can be any number of bunch of colors as we saw. This one, it's cool. This is white, okay? So the white plastic's a good thing because that's basically a, a blank slate. You still wanna prime this with some white primer and then spray over with your, um, you know, your green or blue or whatever it might be. But I have something very special for us today. These Johan kits are getting to be very rare and very hard to find. This is a factory sealed Petty Superbird by Johan. We can see the original shrink wrap on here, the original seam. This thing was made by Detroit or in, in Johan models of uh, Moran, Michigan, or here it is, you know, in Michigan. So Johan, way back when, this thing was assembled, sealed up, and is actually factory air in this Johan kit. But the bigger question is, what shade of plastic is this thing molded in? Let's learn together. Okay, so we break out the number 11 X-Acto blade, slice open the bottom of the box right here. Now some would say, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's a rare kit, Steve. I paid 70 bucks for this thing, by the way. But that's all right, I don't care. Because kits are kind of made to be built, and when I build them, I, I take them pretty seriously, and I, do, I hope to, I do justice to them. Okay, let's tear this open, and off with the factory uh, shrink wrap. I'll put this on eBay right here, <laughs> sell this, and uh, get that off of there. Okay, and then we open it up, and before we look at the color, we got to remember the air inside of this thing is shrink-wrapped and sealed in here from Johan. Maybe John Hanley, the smoke from his Cadillac Eldorado, is trapped inside of this box. I guess John was known for leaving on Friday afternoons before payroll was metered out. Uh, <clears throat> so perhaps factory air. Oh, it smells great. You smell that? It's good stuff. Okay, let's lift the top off this thing and see what color it is. Is it blue? Is it green? It's still in here. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. You tell me. What color is this thing? It's white. Okay, this is, this is cool. Molded in actual white plastic. Very cool to see. This is not the off-white like the other one. And that's, that's a nice thing. We can see here even the shade of white is, uh, is open to interpretation on these things. Now, the only bummer I see on this thing, ooh, right there. This has never been out of the box. See that little hollow right there? Something was up with the tooling or, you know, maybe somebody was mad or who knows what, but there's actually a, a problem with this body right here. So this, again, is a kit that was, you know, originally packaged and sealed up back in 75, 76. Who knows? So I can't go back to the store with this one. But with that said, that's a, a small slice, literally and figuratively, of the history of Johan Superbird models. Again, they can sometimes be molded in these weird blue colors. I've seen them in orange. I've seen them in green. But we got lucky. We got a white one, which is another way of saying that I can prime this thing and not have the blue or green plastic bleed through the primer into the red or the orange or whatever color. So again, if you have an old Johan kit, be ready to break out the primer. They were often molded in weird colors, red, yellow, green, all kinds of stuff. Now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mignanti YouTube channel, and soon I'll give a, a rundown on this Golden Commandos Plymouth when it's finished. It's almost done. Till then, have a good night, have a good day, see you soon.